Welcome to our weekly forecast um, call. And this is for trade for the week of June 10th to the 14th, 2019. Just a quick disclaimer here before we get started. This is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money. All right, so as usual, we'll start off by taking a look at our calendar here. Uh, we'll go to Forex Factory for this. Um, coming up here um, on Sunday here, we do have some data out of uh, Japan. So we have some GDP numbers here, also trade balance numbers for China. So uh, Chinese data has an impact on Australia, um, our Australian dollar and Canadian dollar. So uh, just keep that in mind. And then on Monday here, we do have a holiday in um, parts of Europe here. So it may be a slow session. We do have GDP uh, and manufacturing production numbers. These will be important for the British pound. And going into Tuesday here, not a, um, not a lot from the US, just uh, minor here. The business confidence number here, numbers here for Australia will be important. Um, and then going into Tuesday, we have average earnings index and employment data. So this is kind of like the non-farm payroll data that we get for the US. This is similar uh, for UK. So this will be important. So here we have to look at employment numbers as well as earn average earnings. So if any of these numbers comes out negative, it will have a negative impact on British pound because this number is super important for us. And then we also have the Westpac consumer sentiment number here for Australia. Uh, Australia has uh, recently cut their interest rates. So if you start to see that the numbers are coming out negative, um, it will have a bigger negative impact here. Just like we've been seeing for the US, um, numbers have been coming out negative. And as a result, the market is now expecting the Fed to cut rates as early as July. So negative data as just, just has right now has that impact of creating expectations of changing monetary policy. So uh, very, very important currently. And this is something actually, let's touch on this right now. So we last week, we saw a major shift in um, Fed commentary. So before uh, last year, Fed had been raising rates. We saw um, three interest rate hikes last year. So in total, they did four hikes. However, this year or at the, the end of last year, they started changing that a little bit and they started becoming neutral where they were not going to raise rates anymore. However, this past week there, they have changed their stance one more time where now instead of um, being neutral or raising rates, first time they have actually opened the door to cutting rates with um, Fed saying they're looking to cut or they're open to cutting rates. And also we saw the US numbers, just the last bunch of numbers have come out negative. Plus on Friday, we saw the non-farm payroll numbers came out negative as well. All of that has now created this big sentiment. Um, and this is where we saw the equity markets go up and we saw the US dollar crosses go up as well, as well as yen crosses, because now there's this big market expectation that they're going to cut rates. So if Fed cuts rates, that's bad for US dollar, and it is good for the equity markets. So the equity markets right now are very happy. They're going up because they expect interest rate cuts. When the interest rates are cut, basically businesses can borrow more money. And when businesses can borrow more money, that means they can invest more into their business operations. And that's why the equity markets like this whole interest rate cuts. And this is why we have seen this big shift in the US dollar as well as the, um, our equities market. So all the indices have turned around. They were kind of on this uh, lower move to the downside. But last week, it was a massive uh, up move for the equities and down move for the US dollar. So just wanted to point that out. These fundamentals um, or things that happen um, overall have a major impact on what happens with our trading. Some people had asked me this question about what happened with equities last week or what happened with yen crosses. This is what happened. Uh, US dollar dropped, yen dropped, and equities went up because Fed just changed their commentary completely. So now they're looking at cutting rates and market 
the expectation is as early as July. Don't know if that will actually happen in July, but it has created a strong market sentiment, uh, which is very upbeat for the equities. All right, so moving on there on Wednesday here, we do have CPI numbers here, inflation numbers. This is one of the top, uh, or one of the things that Pavel had mentioned in his speech last week. They are keeping a close eye on um, inflation numbers here. So if these numbers come out negative, again, like I pointed out, this will be another, uh, basically another number that will support uh, the change in monetary policy and cutting of interest rates. So negative data will have negative impact on US dollar. And the more negative data we have, the bigger uh, the impact will be on the US dollar because it will create the expectation that Fed is going to raise rates. So, and also we have employment numbers out of Australia. It will have a direct impact on Australian dollar there. If it comes out positive, um, it will be positive for Australia. Otherwise, uh, we'll have uh, will the Australian dollar drop. And then on Thursday, we have uh, Central Bank here, Swiss National Bank, going to announce their monetary policy here. Now, we already see negative rates from Swiss National Bank, so they're not expected to cut rates. But again, at, at this point, commentary is very, very important. So we have seen Reserve Bank of Australia, Reserve Bank of New Zealand, both of them, they had started talking about how the economy is not doing good, and they had started already the dovish commentary or negative commentary on the forecast for the economy, and now Fed is starting to do that. So both of those banks cut rates, and now Fed is starting to do that. So the expectation is they will cut rates. If Bank of Canada starts to do that, then, you know, so it kind of flows from there. So with this one, again, it will be a commentary that we are concerned about. Um, otherwise, interest rate cuts are not expected at this point. And on Thursday, um, oh, we do have OPEC meetings here. So OPEC meetings will have an impact on, um, on our Canadian dollar as well as oil. So when we have such meetings, what happens is there's lots of journalists that will go and look for comments from the different officials that are in the meeting, and the comments can then drive the, uh, the prices. So keep an eye on these OPEC meetings or the comments that come out of the OPEC meetings if you are trading oil or if you are trading the Canadian dollar. And then Friday here, we have co-retail sales and retail sales numbers. Again, very important numbers for the U.S. as consumer sentiment numbers. If any of these numbers drop, like I said, again, just uh, creates more of that expectation that we are going to likely see uh, price um, or U.S. dollar uh, drop because of the interest rates dropping. So that's all we have. Actually, I forgot to mention something. We also have... Um, uh, the G20 meetings going on this weekend. So as the market opens, um, I would keep an eye on these comments that are coming out of these G20 meetings as well, because there was some talk of uh, US and China meeting, and there was going to be talk about um, trade relationships, right? So um, any comments out of this, like this one says that it has intensified. Uh, let's see what happens if there's more comments like this. It will be um, negative there for the equities. But like I said, there's a lot of positive sentiment for the equities right now. Um, and another thing to keep in mind, uh, U.S. actually uh, did not or will not be moving forward with the tariffs on Mexico. They have changed um, or they have backed off from the tariffs. And as a result of that, it is actually positive thing, which means it will be negative for Japanese yen, positive for the equities. Um, so just keep that relationship in mind. So we could see uh, yen crosses go up when the market opens, uh, but then it will also have to, we'll also have to take into view what happens in the G20 meetings. So anyway, keep an um, ear out for these comments that will be coming out. All right, so let's start off our, we'll look at the charts here, as we can see huge move up in uh, our euro. So we'll go to the weekly chart here. Okay, so euro had been dropping and um, last week we saw that price had moved down here. 
it did not manage to go down. So there were, oh, another thing I forgot to mention here was uh, we did have ECB last week as well. A lot of the participants were expecting ECB to be negative, just like Fed has been, but the difference, so they were not overly, you know, bullish about the state of the economy. They said it's doing okay. But the biggest thing that they mentioned ECB um, that came out of ECB was that before they were supposed to raise rates this summer. So, and then in the previous press conference, they had said, we're not going to be raising rates in summer of 2019. And now, now they've actually said that they are going to potentially look at interest rate hikes next year. So because they're not cutting rates or they're not, they will be doing more LTRO operations, but because they did not talk about this huge shift in monetary policy, they just said we're going to push the raising of rates another year. That created positive sentiment for the euro and we have seen euro go all the way to the top of this range here. So this is looking very bullish here. So our bias for this week is bullish. And in terms of the move that I would look for here for Euro will be a pullback potentially into this level here, 1.1260, and then a further move to the upside. But the looking for um, a move higher here, the target here is 1.1450. So bias here will be bullish for our Euro dollar. So bullish bias. Let's take a look at pound here. Pound has gone up as well. All the US crosses have gone up. So now we have a shift in the sentiment here. So last week it was bearish, but then Fed changed and we did not get that move. Now this is looking bullish here. Now it is into support resistance here. So that's something to be mindful of. Uh, this is our support resistance coming all the way from here. So it is important level but it is looking bullish at this point. So I would look for price to move higher. So bias will be bullish. Um, now, if it does not break for some reason, if it does not break the high, this level here, then it could turn around because in the last three weeks, it's been trading sideways here. It could stay in the range, but I am actually looking for a potential pullback here and then a further move to the upside. So the first target here would be 1.29. 0, 0, 2900 and third uh, second target would be 1.300 so bullish bias here for pound dollar as well next we have aussie dollar so aussie uh, reserve bank of australia cut rates but because us dollar was soft we have seen Aus um, aussie dollar go up now we are again into support resistance on this one here as well. So we will have to see a break above this, but the weekly candle close here is um, looking solid here. So this is bullish as well. And with this one bias again is to the upside because of that solid bullish candle close. And next target here, uh, so first target here would be 0 0.7050, potentially into um, 0 0.7080 level there, and then looking for it to go higher if it does break through that. So this one, where it is currently, that is an important support resistance level, maybe slightly higher here into 7080 level. But if it, so if it doesn't go through that, then we could see a drop. So like that, we could see that happen, but chances are with the bullish sentiment and the bullish candle close here, we're looking for price to go higher. So the bias here will be bullish for our Aussie dollar. But again, keep this in mind, this is a strong support resistance. If it doesn't break, we're looking for price to come back down. So that will be the caution. Anytime we are into major support resistance, we could see price come back into the range like it's been trading in this range for last five weeks. So just keep that in mind, but otherwise bias is bullish here. New Zealand dollar here, this one has been quite strong. It's been going up steadily in spite of the interest rate cuts. Huge move here to the upside here. Uh, so we have a big bullish candle close, which gives our, puts our bias to the upside here. So bullish bias, we could see a drop, 
Um, so we can watch out for that, but bias definitely is bullish at this point. Now, the only thing that can change really this kind of stuff will be the trade relation news, but otherwise we have a bullish bias and this is the move I'm looking for. So potential pullback into 0.6620 ish level and then looking for price to move up higher. So first target, our target will be 0.6780 level. Now with this one here as well, there is this support resistance level around here. See this one? So this here, if price does not go above 67.20, it can turn around, but bias is bullish and target is 0.6780. Dollar CAD here, huge drop. Price had been trading in this range and it came out of the range, dropped through the range, came back and did a back test of the previous support resistance level. And now we have a big drop here. So part of this reason was that we got negative data out of the US and positive data out of Canada. And this was basically a perfect trade, keeping in mind those two data points here. And that's why we have seen dollar cat drop because Canadian dollar is strong and US dollar is weak. So now keeping that in mind, um, we see a bearish bias here. It is right into our support. So be mindful of that. Uh, but bias is to the downside. And next target would be 1.3120-ish level. So bearish bias here. And with this one as well, we could get a pullback right into this previous support resistance level. Anytime we have large moves, um, they're all, most of the time, they're sentiment driven moves. And with sentiment driven moves, we could get that, those pullbacks before the price continues in the direction of that previous trend here. So looking for a pullback here and then a drop. So bias is to the downside um, and target is 1.3120. Now, like this one here, there was no pullback. So just keep that in mind that it could keep on going as well. But um, I would look out for this pullback and a drop. So bias is bearish here for dollar CAD. Euro pound here, this is looking bullish here. A price had been trading in a range for the entire week, but now we have, um, by at the close of the week, we have a bullish candle close here. So bias is bullish with this one. Next target here, um, next two targets, uh, first one is 0 0.8950 and then 0 0.8980. So bullish bias here for Euro pound. All right, Swiss franc here. Swiss franc, we do have the monetary policy or national bank coming. Um, so with this one, just from purely technical perspective, we have a pin bar here, a bullish pin bar, which suggests the price, um, uh, the move will be higher. So we're looking for an up move here, basically. So bullish bias here, it is into a bit of the support resistance. So we would need to see this uh, price go above 1.1210 level, but bias is bullish. Um, unless of course the Swiss National Bank comes and says something uh, like Fed did and completely changes the, um, the trajectory here, uh, bias is bullish at this point from technical perspective. So next target is 1.1280 and then 1.1380 level here as well. So bullish bias for Euro Swiss franc. Pound Swiss franc here, this has been holding here. Uh, pound has not been as strong as Euro. So we do have a bearish bias for pound Swiss franc. Now the candles are decreasing in size, which means the move is losing momentum. And when we see a price move lose momentum, um, it just basically shows us that there could be reversals coming. So just keep that in mind. We've had several weeks of a down move and now price, the candles are getting smaller, uh, showing us a loss in momentum. Okay, so for this uh, one, bias is still to the downside. Next target is 1.2480 into this support resistance level. And from there, we could see price turn around. So watch out for that. Uh, but bias right now is bearish and looking for price to draw further. 1.2480 will be the target here for pound Swiss franc. Dollar Swiss franc here, this one US dollar being weak, we saw a huge move to the downside. We did have a pin bar last week here, um, which 
means that we were looking for this move. So it did work out the way we had expected it, but bias is bearish here. Again, keep in mind, we are coming into these support levels and this one has also dropped for a while and combined with Swiss National Bank saying something, it could turn. But uh, just purely technicals here, looking at a drop, uh, pullback could be into 9,900 and then a drop, or we could get a bit of a bigger pullback into 0 0.9950 and then a further drop. So bias here is bearish. Next target is 0 0.9800. And then below that, we have 0 0.9750. So bearish bias here for dollar Swiss franc. Yen crosses here. Yen crosses went up. So with this one here, pound yen, and this one is pulling back. So it hasn't completely turned bullish, um, but it could go higher as the equity markets, um, if the equity markets keep on rising because of the expectation of interest rate cuts, yen crosses are likely to um, go up because the money will be moving from safe haven currency, which is yen, one of the currencies, which is yen, and going into the equity markets, which could cause a push to the upside here. So with this one, um, first, so bias will be slightly to the positive side here. So 138.50 is the first target. If it doesn't go through, we could see this type of a move, push higher and then drop, or it could continue going all the way into this next support and resistance level at uh, 140. So bias here is bullish. First target is 138.50 and then 140. So uh, bullish bias here for pound yen. Euro yen here, this one has been going up solidly and we have a big bullish candle close here. Now it is into support resistance right here. So it could turn around. See here, we had big solid candle going into support resistance and then turn around. So be mindful of that, but it is looking quite bullish here, which means we could see a move higher and 123.80 will be the first target. And if it continues to go on, then we're looking at 124.80. So bias here is bullish. So either something like this, um, 123.80, or it could go all the way up into 124.80. So bullish bias here for our euro yen. Dollar yen here, this one is looking um, neutral here. We did see price drop here, but the candle close here is neutral. So bias will be neutral, which means it can go in either direction here. So we could see a pullback if all the yen crosses are uh, pulling higher, this is likely to go. And the reason this one has not been as bullish is because US dollar is really weak. So it, can't, it had trouble going up. But if the sentiment really turns positive for towards the equities, this one could go higher. So 1920 will be the target for this. Now with this one, um, as we can see here, prices into support resistance here as well. So this one, if we were to draw our, uh, this is one and then right where price is, this is a support, important support resistance level. Here we saw price turn, here it held above, we had trouble here. So now we are back into this level. So if price stays below, then chances are it could draw further um, because it is neutral candle, it could go in either direction. But um, if other yen crosses start pulling higher, this is likely to go higher as well. So for now, neutral bias, but be open to the move higher. Aussie yen here, this has been trading sideways here from the daily perspective. It's been in this one big range. And over the last few days, it hasn't really done a whole lot is dropped and then it has pulled back within that range. Now we are into support resistance here, but we have a bullish candle close, which means it could go higher. And so bias is slightly bullish here. I'm not um, super bullish on Australian dollar just on its own because Australian dollar is weaker because of the interest rate cuts. But against the US dollar, it does appear stronger just because of the potential interest rate cuts for the Fed. Um, so at this point, slightly bullish, I would say. Uh, my first target here would be 
just into this level here at 76.30 and then a drop from there. So if you were to look all this way over here, um, we are currently into support resistance, but if price gets through that, um, then we have another support resistance level right into here, which as we can see had an impact earlier. So we could see a move all the way higher into that level. So for now, bias is bullish. First target here will be, let's get rid of that, 76.35 and then 77.00. So bullish bias here for Aussie yen as well. Next, New Zealand yen. This one has also moved higher, so bias here is bullish. This one has been a very strong. New Zealand dollar was strong, um, and so is New Zealand yen. So bias here is bullish, but again, keep in mind, we are coming up against some solid support resistance level right here. And that could turn things around because it did have a big impact here as well, and then back in this area. So if price stays below this level, then chances are we could see price move lower here. However, bias is bullish. First target is 72.50, then we are looking at 73.50. So bullish bias here for New Zealand um, yen as well. But in terms of the pullback, we could probably get a pullback like this and then move higher. So that's the move I would be expecting, a bit of a pullback and then a further move higher. First target, 72.50, second target, 73.50. So bullish bias there. CAD yen here, this one is also looking bullish. We have a big move to the upside. Now uh, we are into support resistance all the way over here. So that's something to keep in mind, but this is uh, bullish here. So the move I would expect here would be maybe a bit of a pullback like this and a further move to the upside here. 82.50 is the target. Uh, Canadian dollar with the positive data and all of that, this one was very, very strong. Canadian dollar was very strong last week. So uh, big bullish, or uh, it looks solid bullish here. 82.50 first target, 83.50 is the second target here. All right, let's take a look at commodities now. Commodities are moving higher. Now we do see a big move up in um, our gold here, but we are into resistance here. This is um, where price had tested the previous level here. Now, if price does not go through that, we could see a turnaround. So just keep that in mind, that price could turn there because it's a major swing level. But as we can see here, this one looks bullish as well, which is interesting because generally when equities drop, um, gold goes up, but right now this is looking bullish. So there are two options that may come to fruition here. One is that price here basically pulls back for a further move higher. So that's one or second one is that we have this big M formation here, prices into resistance, and then it can drop from here, right? We don't know which one at this point because it's still at this. So we have to see a close here below this level for it to drop. So at this point, bias is bullish, but keep in mind, like I said, again, it is into resistance, which means um, it could drop, turn around from here. However, we could also simply get a pullback and then a move higher. And because gold is expensive, that's why Australian dollar, our gold has been going up. That's why Australian dollar has been going up. As soon as gold stops going higher, we are likely to see Australian dollar drop as well. So just that correlation to keep in mind as well. But for now, this is looking bullish. And then we are into some major resistance here and that is likely to cause this to drop. But for now, bias is bullish, pull back into 1332, and then potential move higher into the very top, 1365, and that's where we could get some major resistance. But here as well, this was a major swing point, so it could turn around here. Um, so just keep that in mind as you are trading. So we need to see a close below for it to drop, but we could see that M. Uh, silver here has also been going up. So we have had 
a bullish candle close here. So next up, looking for it to go um, higher and target is 15.30 uh, and then 15.60. So bullish bias here for silver as well. And in terms of pullback, we could potentially see a pullback either into 14.85 or 14.75 here. So a bit of a pullback and then a further move higher. So bullish bias silver as well. Oil here, oil has also pulled back in the last couple of days there. So we have a bullish pin bar here, which means it could go higher. Now do notice that we are into this resistance, support resistance level here. Um, and we could draw this all the way from here. So this here is major support resistance level and we are back into it. Oops. Let me just redraw that. Here we are. Okay, so we are back into this uh, support resistance level. And even when the candles were bullish, it couldn't get through. So right here as well, and right here. So what that means is that if price does not break the high of this week, it could still turn around. However, chances are um, we saw a big drop here, pullback, and then we could likely see something like that. So right now, bias is bullish, target is 57.20. So bullish bias um, here for oil. And if it does go through that level, then we are coming into 59.80. So uh, bullish bias there. Copper here, this is looking a bearish still. We haven't seen a major pullback. Last week we were looking for a drop, so we did get that. Now it's still bearish. So next target will be 2.55 and then potentially into 2.50 here. So bearish bias uh, for our Canadian, uh, sorry, Canadian copper, copper here, not Canadian dollar, uh, copper. And then we are into this major support and it could change, um, it could turn around from there. So for now, bias is bearish. 2.55 is the first target, 2.50 second target here. Bitcoin has been interesting. So this one, like I always mention, uh, my chart has not been updated. Bitcoin does trade on the weekend. So please refer to your updated chart. But from this chart here, it, this looks bullish still, and we could see price go higher. As long as it stays above 74.20, I will look for a move into the highs at 89.20. Now, if something's changed over the weekend, so please do refer to that chart, that chart will be more valid than what we have here. So, um, but my bias for Bitcoin is bullish. S&P 500, so on to our equities markets, very, very bullish move here, uh, major sentiment driven move. So that makes us our bias bullish here and looking for price to move higher. Now we could see pullbacks, so in terms of pullbacks, um, I would look for um, 28.30 here potentially, and then a further move higher. So bias is bullish. Um, we have 28.50, which is basically our highs here. That is our target for the equities markets here. NASDAQ, NASDAQ has also gone up a huge move to the upside. So for this one, bias is also bullish. And with this one, I will look for a pullback into 72.60. Now, if the bias is very, very strong, sentiment is very strong, we may not get pullbacks and it could just go higher. Um, but this is what I would normally expect. So bias is bullish and target is 7,700 level. Um, and potential pullback into 7260 area. So bullish bias for NASDAQ as well. Moving on to Nikkei here, this is also looking very bullish. So bias is also to the upside. Potential pullback here into 20780 and then a further move higher. So this one is also uh, looking bullish. First target, 21400, second target, uh, 21870. So let's say 21880. So bullish bias here uh, for Nikkei as well. 
And then last two here, DAX is also looking bullish, a huge move higher. Uh, next target is to the upside, one, two, two, five, zero. And then we have basically all the way. So the move here would be or of one that I would expect will be something like this. I cannot dictate the moves, but 11920. So let's say, um, yeah, so 11920. So will be the pullback level. First target is um, 12250 and then 12450. So bullish bias here for DAX as well. And last but not least, FTSE here looking super strong. A uh, big bullish candle close, so looking for a further move higher. And targets are, uh, so pullback level here that I would look for would be a 7260 as a potential pullback level, and then a further move higher. First target, 7491. So yeah, basically 7500 is what we're looking for. Bullish bias here for FTSE as well. And then somebody asked a question, how do I draw lines here? I'm using this web conference software, Zoom. It comes with blackboarding and drawing abilities. So that's what I'm using to draw my lines. It's uh, just the web conference software has that ability. Uh, so that's what I have. Uh, there is a spreadsheet that comes with this. Everything that we discussed here, if you're on my mailing list, however you may have joined it, uh, you will get a copy of that in your email. So look out for that. But if you're not, um, you can just um, go to tradingwithvenus.com forward slash forecast and you will get that uh, spreadsheet. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that we do this on a daily basis. So when things change, somebody had asked me, um, why did the equity markets go up last week? If you were in my... Uh, with me on the daily calls, you would have known because we, we discussed this at great length um, during our calls. So if you do want to join me on a daily basis and get the similar analysis, but just for the next day, setting targets and pullback levels and all of that wonderful stuff, you can uh, go to my website, tradingwithvenus.com. You're looking for Trade Vault. Um, and again, with the Trade Vault, you will get... Um, so you will get um, everything that we have. Um, so you'll get the analysis as well as the checklist that I send out every um, day. So this is the trade vault. You can get it for $127 a month, or if you want to buy it for the year, it's $997. So that's all I have. Any questions before we wrap this up? All right, no questions. So you guys have a wonderful trading week and I will see you next time. You're welcome. Bye for now.